Hi. Today I wanted to look at using the internal oscillator of the ATmega 328P chip. Um, in the last video, I programmed this chip to run at 1 MHz on the internal RC oscillator. And um, this board is just programmed to, uh, or this chip is programmed to use the um, external 8 MHz oscillator. So I wanted to look at using the internal oscillator and see if there are any problems that we might have, and if so, what we can do to fix them. So these are the two test boards I'm going to be using today. And so one more thing too. Why would we want to run at different frequencies? Well, if you don't need the performance from the default 16 megahertz frequency that your Arduino is going to run at, you might want to run at a lower frequency. But why would you want to do that? Well, one of the reasons would be that running at a lower frequency, you can run at a lower voltage and stay within spec. So here we have um, the 8 megahertz external crystal uh, board. And instead of running at 5 volts, in which Arduinos would normally run at, we can run at uh, lower voltages um, and the range uh, that I'm running this 8 megahertz crystal is going to be or board at is going to be um, between 4.2 and maybe about 3.4 volts and the 8 megahertz uh, the chip at 8 megahertz will run just fine on that but I wanted to see if I could run on say two AA batteries you know maybe 3.1 to maybe 1.8 volts you know, that should be possible at clocked uh, at one megahertz. Um, the performance will be less significantly, but it seems as though it will be enough for this application. So we can run at significantly reduced voltages and also significantly reduced power, which will make um, low power applications such as this one much more favorable in terms of battery life. So let's have a Okay, so we're going to be looking at NEC codes and specifically the protocol and the time period that we need. If we're going to be doing this calibration, we need to know exactly when um, the codes are going to end and the time periods and everything. So let's take a look for NEC IR codes. Okay, so let's look at this tech docs one. And this tells us quite a bit about the NSC, NEC infrared transmission protocol. So um, we can look at all this data, but um, so we have the first leading pulse, nine milliseconds. But um, one of the easier ways to see if everything is um, timed correctly is to look at um, the length of the whole uh, code. So 67.5 milliseconds um, up until basically this before right before this last pulse right here. So we're going to be looking at that from the start almost all the way to the end um, basically to the leading edge before the last pulse. That's all your data. The uh, address, the inverse, the command, and the inverse. Okay, so that's what we'll be looking for. All right, so here we are at the oscilloscope. I have the board hooked up um, to power. It's getting 4.2 volts. I have the scope probe hooked up to the IR bulb here. All right, so here I have the board with the 8 megahertz external crystal um, hooked up. Um, and as you can see, every five seconds, the program sends out a uh, pulse, series of pulses. And that is the IR code. I think it's actually power on for my stereo receiver. So let's take a closer look at this and see um, what kind of timing we see. Okay, 
So, we should be close to about 67 seconds for the whole wave, for the whole code. So let's see where we are. So if we go to the pulse right before the last one, we're at 67, which is about right. So very close, if not right on. And that's with the external crystal oscillator. So of course it'll be very accurate. Now let's check out the board with the internal one megahertz RC oscillator in comparison. And I should also mention that this is running at four volts and that's what I'm gonna start the one megahertz board at as well. Okay, up and running, a little bit higher voltage here because there's no IR LED hooked up. So let's adjust for that. Okay, there we have a nice looking wave every five seconds. Let's capture that. There we go. And with our measurement marks where they were before, we can pretty easily take a measurement of the entire code, which ends about there. And look at that. Just with the default settings, we have 78 milliseconds quite far from the 67 that we're supposed to have. So the receiving end, uh, receiving the IR codes, is most likely not going to be able to interpret this. So let's look a little bit deeper into that. Okay, so now what I wanted to cover was how to get the clock out um, on an Arduino pin so we can look at the internal RC oscillator and try to calibrate it or just see where it's running at what voltage. So um, I use, right now I'm using something called the mini core and you can find well, with Arduino, with the Arduino IDE that's uh, I guess a board or I guess maybe a core. Um, so here I've installed mini core and we have the eight, I've selected the AT Mega 328 option. And here we can see different fr frequencies um, which you can select, and brownout detection, and different variants. If you're using the PB or maybe just the P or the PA or just the A, etc., and just a bunch of different options. It's a nice core. So let's sh let's see how to install the mini core. All right. So we're going to go Google. And we're just going to Google Mini Core Arduino third party boards. And there you'll be able to find a nice GitHub um, reference that'll uh, su supply you with what you need to get the Mini Core installed. So here's just um, a list of the uh, third party boards for Arduino. And let's, um, let's do a search for Mini Core. And then here we have the Mini Core. We need to just copy this link here, just uh, basically a text file. And so we just copy this. We're going to go to the Arduino IDE. We're going to go to uh, actually the preferences. We're going to go down here to the additional boards manager URLs. We're going to expand that and we're going to just add on a new line the mini core. So here, let me just add it in at the bottom here already had it but let's just put it there just like that okay okay so we've added that now we're gonna go to the tools menu boards boards manager we're just gonna do a search for mini core mini core and you can see it's installed for me but you just install it here where the remove button is for me okay um, and then you go to the boards menu again, and somewhere here, depending on what you have installed, you'd see it, Minicore. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to 
burn some fuses and we want to get the clock out option so we can get the clock out on a pin and we can look at the output on our oscilloscope. So let's go find where the mini core boards file is because that's what we want to modify. Okay, so I'm going to go to my PC, I'm going to go to the local drive, local C drive, the users, your username, app data, local, Arduino 15, packages, mini core. So here you find the mini core, hardware, AVR, the version, and then here we have the boards.txt, and that's what we're going to be modifying. So let's open that here. All right, so here's the boards.txt file, and this has a lot of the menu options and different options for the boards. And what we're concerned with is the ATmega328 AP, PA, PB options. So all these options right here, going down to here. Um, and then specifically what I'm interested in is the um, 1 megahertz options, because that's what I'm going to be running at. So we can see that when you uh, burn the bootloader, or burn the fuses, which is what it does, is it um, sets the low fuses to this uh, hexadecimal value. So this is what we're going to need to change to get the clock out. So let's go take a look at the low fuses. Okay, so let's go here, let's Google 18 mega 328p fuse settings. Well, what comes up? Well, what comes up first here for me was all about circuits.com. And this is actually a nice, quick to the point reference. You could also look into the data sheet. It'll have this is where they pull the information that we need from. But this is a little bit faster just to um, quickly look at. So we have the extended fuse bytes, we have the high fuse bytes, and we have the uh, low bytes. So what we're looking for is this clock out option right here in bit number six, clock output, and it's unprogrammed. So we want it to be programmed to be active. So, um, so we need to set the uh, low fuse bytes as to a custom number. You can see right here, it's at 62. Well, let's just see what Minicore is setting the low fu fuse bytes for before we change anything. Okay, so here we have the uh, a binary to hexadecimal converter. And here we have the, well, I already have it in here. Here we have the uh, hex to binary converter. So 62, and we get this binary value. So if we go look at the uh, low fuse bytes here, we can see by default we have programmed, unprogrammed, unprogrammed, programmed, 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 unprogrammed, and then programmed. So it's set exactly the same as the default default values okay, um, for a factory board. So what we want to do is we actually want to program this clock out. So it's unprogrammed as a 1 and it's bit number 6 so that's right here. So we're going to set that to a 0, copy that. We're going to go over to our binary to hexadecimal converter which you can just find on the net. Let's enter that there and we get the hexadecimal value of 22. So that's our new value that we need to put into the text file. So what I've done is I've just copied this whole menu option for the 328 uh, different variants and I've gone to the bottom and I've pasted it and then what I've had to do is change the first um, option. So here's a 328. I've just changed it to clock out. I've got to change this all to clock out. You can do a, uh, that various ways. I'll leave it up to you. And then I've also changed the name to 328 clock out so we don't get a duplicate. 
And so here at the bottom, this is the 1 megahertz option. And I've changed that from 0x62 to 0x22 to set our clock out. Okay, so we'd save that. We didn't change, and notice we didn't change anything except for we added this down here. So if anything goes wrong, you can just delete that, and you'll have the same file. So you'll be able to burn the fuses that come by default um, with this file. Okay, so we've changed that. We're going to go to Tools. We're going to go back to the Boards Manager. You're going to have it reset everything, refresh the Boards menu. We'll close that. Now what you should have when you come down to the mini core is you should have another option, clock out. So I'm going to select that. And you can see I've eliminated a lot of the options for it. Because I know I only want the 1 megahertz and I've kept the brownout detection and various other things, but uh, variants I've just selected one variant. So now you hook up your board with your SPI adapter and you simply burn bootloader and that's going to set the fuses. Um, and then you'll be able to get the clock out on pin 14. Or let's let me see what digit what Arduino pin that is. Um, I'm pretty sure it's either 8 or 9, but let me just double check. Okay, so yeah, it's PBO. So it's our uh, pin 14, physical pin 14, and digital pin 8 on the Arduino. If you want to take a look at the clock out with the oscilloscope, which you will because there's no other reason to set this unless you're going to use it. So we can use this clock out now to take a look at the frequency in which the internal RC oscillator is running if we want to calibrate it or just see what voltages it um, uh, which frequency what frequency corresponds to different voltages okay so that's how to do that so here's a quick demonstration of the variability of the internal RC oscillator um, depending on the voltage here I have the AT Mega 328 chip set up and it's set up with the internal oscillator, no external crystal, running at 1 megahertz, and I'm outputting the um, signal here. Then here we have the voltage I'm supplying at 5.1 volts, and here on the oscilloscope we can see that it's running at about 1 megahertz. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to decrease the voltage here and pay attention to the uh, frequency of what the chip is running. So we've decreased it down one volt and it's running at about, still about one megahertz, right? But I've set the brownout detection for 1.8 volts and running at one megahertz, that's just fine. So we've decreased it now to three volts. Let's see where we're at. We're already down to 985 kilohertz. So let's go to 2 volts. Hmm. 0.9. And now we're down to oh, 955. So timing sense uh, application that we're the timing is critical, like uh, your uh, IR remote, which is the case that I would like to run it on. That's not going to work. The timing is going to be so far off for most applications that it will not uh, receive the signal. So, yep, about 950 kilohertz. You can, however, calibrate this. So if you want to run on, say, two AA batteries, you can calibrate the uh, internal RC oscillator to work on voltages around that. Okay, so we've seen that the internal RC 
uh, oscillator uh, varies quite a bit with voltage. So if we want to run at a lower voltage, it looks like the um, the frequency decreases a lot. So we need to uh, calibrate this. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by inserting a bit of code like this, OSCCAL, and um, so in another video by um, someone called Martin P, he does a great job looking at um, the frequencies and calibration, and I'll link his video in at the description. It helped me quite a bit. So, what we need to do will ideally is find the um, default calibration value for this chip. And from the factory, um, they calibrate the chips so that each ca each one is calibrated a little bit differently. So, ideally, what you would do is you would find the calibration for your particular chip and you need Atmel Studio installed to do that which I do not have at the moment installed so I'm not going to do that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use just a, a value that would be pretty close to what I believe would be the uh, factory default which I think was uh, AB that's what um, in Martin's video was the default calibration but we would want to increase that a fair bit to try to uh, cal to increase the frequency at a lower voltage. So what I'd like to do is maybe, uh, let's bring up a table here. Um, so if the default calibration, and this is just a uh, rapid tables, uh, binary to hex. So, um, so if it's at AB, we could try AC or AD, or possibly maybe I'll jump to AE and see how that would work out. So default may be around AB, and you'll just have to play with this and see what works. So I think we're, what we're going to do is we're going to try AE, and we're going to see what that does for our lower voltage applications. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to program this into the 1 megahertz board. So I'm going to set my uh, clock out option and I'm going to I'm going to decrease the brownout detection so we can run at the lower voltages. Or you could disable it and make sure my 1 megahertz uh, option is uh, selected and then burn the bootloader to burn the fuses. And then after we burn the bootloader and burn the fuses, simply upload using programmer. So I'm going to go do that and let's see how it looks on the oscilloscope. Okay, here we are at the oscilloscope again and I've got the uh, board hooked up here and I uh, have the outputs, uh, the clock out pin and I'm running the board at uh, 4 volts again and we have the uh, frequency at the top here at 1.03 megahertz. So that's over 1 megahertz at 4 volts. So now let's decrease the uh, voltage down to 3 volts. So this is already a bit higher. So we're going to see if we um, increase the clock enough. So now we're running at 3 volts, and it's still a fairly high clock, so it may be too much. Um, we'd have to test our IR codes and see um, how much they're overclocked. And let's go to 2 volts now, though. And look at that, 2 volts, we're doing about 1 megahertz. So this is probably a bit overclocked too much and we're going to have to try to reduce that. All right, so we're back and um, I've calibrated the oscillator to where the timing 
is just about right. Let's take a look at it. So if we go to about here, 67.8, let's actually, let me adjust this a little bit. Okay, so yeah, we're about 67 and a half. That's about perfect. But um, yeah, let's look at the uh, oscillator output also. To achieve that um, IR send, I had to uh, clock the calibration, I had to clock the one megahertz um, oscillator quite a bit higher than one megahertz. So let's take a look at that. And we have 1.18 megahertz, so that's quite a bit higher. So I don't know, the IR timings are correct, but let's take a look at something else I noticed with that. So let's go back to, oops, let's go back to the IR. Okay, so there's the pulse. So let's zoom in here and look at the individual, uh, the carrier frequency. Um, so it should be 38 um, kilohertz carrier frequency. But with this new clock, come on, we have a about a 45 kilohertz carrier frequency. So that's a bit too fast. Um, so it's really not optimal. It may still work, but there are some side effects of achieving this um, IR um, timing that I needed. So it's possible that the chip doesn't want to run this library at the right speed. So that's just a side effect and it may just not be possible to run at one megahertz for this application. And I may just have to stick with the eight. All right, and for the final test, we're going to set the power supply to three volts and I've moved it in here to my living room where my stereo is. And we have the board with the uh, eight megahertz, or I mean, sorry, the uh, one megahertz um, oscillator running. I just have an IR bulb just pushed in there, not soldered in at the moment. I'm going to aim it down at the stereo, and every five seconds it's going to uh, send a pulse. And we're going to see if we can get this to turn on. Let me make sure I aim it there, and there we go. It's on. So it is working with the calibrated values.